start. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. At 11.39 Eastern, twice the speed of sound, the Challenger's fuselage breaks apart from the inside out. America's space program suffers its first fatalities in flight. God, no! All seven Challenger crew members perish. Okay, everybody, stay off the telephones. Make sure you maintain all your data. Start pulling it together. We come together today to mourn the loss of seven brave Americans to share the grief that we all feel and perhaps in that sharing to find the strength to bear our sorrow and the courage to look for the seeds of hope. The investigation, headed by former Secretary of State William Rogers, would fault a solid rocket booster O-ring, rendered defective by the bitter cold. But the Commission's findings also address the human factor. The role played by shuttle program managers in sending Challenger aloft that day. The shuttle program came to a halt. It took more than two and a half years of arduous engineering analysis and painful soul searching before a retooled and reborn shuttle would return to flight. Challenger was tough because it not only represented a breakdown in communications, but it just it represented everything that's wrong or, or you know, wrong about an agency like, like we are, where segments of the agency weren't talking to each other and didn't know everything that we should know. We thought we knew where all the risks were and, and had them pretty well contained. Uh, the, uh, the solid rocket boosters that caused the accident, obviously there was something that had slipped through. Uh, so uh, we went back uh, throughout, you know, the complete vehicle, all the systems, and uh, did a complete uh, uh, review and, and trying to uh, find any other things that we may have missed that may be lurking there. When things are really starting to look smooth and you're starting to get maybe overconfident in a way, then it's time for you to step back, think about what you're doing, go back and look, do some additional testing, and see if there's something that, that you really hadn't anticipated that is going on with your systems. During a lot of that time, uh, we got a lot of criticism that maybe the agency had lost its edge. There were folks inside the agency that started, started losing their confidence thinking maybe we can't do this anymore. Two and a half years later when we flew and then landed that flight, it showed that no, we really can't overcome really, really large problems, really tough technical problems today, just like we could 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or 50 years ago. That was, a, that was an important milestone. And liftoff, liftoff, Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. On September 29, 1988, 975 days after the loss of Challenger and her crew, the orbiter Discovery returned six veteran astronauts to space to deploy a tracking and data relay satellite important to a number of NASA missions. SDS-26 proved a comeback milestone for the space shuttle and initiated a tradition that survives with the program today. During the flight, we had roses show up in the mission control center. Six roses, five red, one white. And there was a card attached to it, and it simply said, congratulations, return to flight, we wish you well. And it was signed Mark, Terry, and Mackenzie Shelton. Didn't know who they were, but after the flight, we, uh, through the, the Foro Company, we, we tracked them down so we could send them some pictures and, and something to thank them for sending the roses to mission control. So the next flight, roses show up again. And again, it's five roses for the members of the crew and one rose for those who have lost their lives in this endeavor. And so this family, they have become part of our family. And they haven't missed a flight since. Every flight since that time and, and to date, and I suspect they're gonna go right with us to the end of the shuttle program. STS-26 ended on October 3rd, 1988 at Edwards Air Force Base, California. Standing by for nose gear and touchdown. With Discovery's safe landing, on runway 17, the triumphant crew was greeted warmly by Vice President George Bush on behalf of a proud and grateful nation. There's something special about a return to flight that, that makes you, you have some trepidation because you're, it's still fresh in your mind that you're, you're frail and, and you can make mistakes and you're human. 
In the spring of 1990, the $1.5 billion Hubble Space Telescope was loaded into Space Shuttle Discovery's payload bay, and on April 24th, was sent aloft to be deployed to Earth orbit on STS-31. Capcom, we have a go for release. Discovery, go for Hubble release. Okay, we have a go for release. As envisioned, Hubble would return never-before-seen images detailing our universe as it was millions upon millions of years before. Soon it would become clear that Hubble pictures were not. Several days later, if not a couple of weeks, we found out after we were back on Earth that it had a problem with its vision. And most of us were just devastated, you know, that here we had this marvelous instrument that we had put on orbit and it was going to be useless. It turned out that it wasn't useless at all because even as with its flaw, it was still a much better telescope than anything that we had, you know, on Earth. A shuttle mission dedicated to the telescope's repair was planned. In essence, Hubble's nearsightedness would be corrected with a new pair of glasses. Lift off of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. We finally flew uh, STS-61, which was the first Hubble servicing mission. Absolutely incredible mission. Well, clearly we have a dynamic situation. You cannot take the 84-inch mirror out of the telescope. It's part of structure, too big, it's there. So by putting in one box called CoStar, and we're able to correct aberrant light for five other instruments. Of all the space shuttle missions we've flown, it was without a doubt the most ambitious flight, but the one that I think demonstrated NASA's uh, can-do attitude, its technological skill, its technical capability, and the spirit of its people. Two teams of astronauts made a record five back-to-back -back spacewalks to refurbish Hubble and realize her potential to awe and astound. While Hubble servicing missions were very important, the true gift of a maneuverable shuttle was soon realized in a very different rescue mission. Booster ignition and liftoff of the maiden voyage of Endeavour on a satellite rescue mission. Months earlier, in May of 1992, the seven astronauts of STS-49 overcame initial setbacks to pluck the $180 million Intel Sat-6 communication satellite from an unusable orbit. It was going to be a very simple rendezvous, you know, get close, bring the satellite down close and grapple it with the remote manipulator system. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. We got up there to capture it, uh, the, uh, the bar, we tapped the satellite and, the, and the, with the bar and the satellite started uh, moving out of control. Get me in, pitch me over. Into the arm, watch the arm. Oh, that's a again. You're gonna have to get out of there. It can be very difficult catching something like a tumbling satellite in space. The slightest touch or mistouch by the astronaut with the equipment, and you can send that satellite tumbling. Yeah, make sure that when you want me to yaw right, you say yaw right. Okay. Any other time right, it's just right. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That right. move. We're moving. And so it was very touch and go on that mission, actually. Commander Dan Branistein and pilot Kevin Chilton are preparing for the upcoming terminal initiate burn. After several days of failed attempts with Endeavour's remote arm, Commander Dan Brandenstein literally tries a new approach. Yeah, real easy, guys, real easy. Don't bring us any closer, Dan. Okay, I'm stopping it. At Endeavour's helm, Brandenstein delicately maneuvers the orbiter up to the four and a half ton Intel Sat-6. The satellite is, is rolling out of control in three different axes at once, and you could actually fly the shuttle and, and fly this maneuver around and keep it aligned with it. It's got to be, it's got to be the neutral point right here. Three people grabbed 18,000 pounds. Aware that any miscue could endanger not only the satellite, but also the ride home, spacewalkers Pierre Thuet, Tom Akers, and Rick Heap reach out and secure the satellite by hand. OK, wait, wait. Got a good grip? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I think we got a satellite. 
Yeah, nice job, guys. Intel Sat 6 is released from the cargo bay with a new mini rocket motor for a gentle push to its proper orbit, where it remains today fully functional.